Welcome to Tech Transformation with CGT and RIS News. I'm Lisa Johnson, the Editor-in-Chief of CGT. Now in Tech Transformation, we talk about the innovative trends and strategies impacting the retail and consumer goods industry. And today I'm really excited to be speaking with Fred Lalio, CEO of Air Technology, about one of the technologies that's having great ramifications and getting a lot of attention, and that's decision intelligence. Now, Fred's here as part of a special series that we're doing with ERA. And so in this first episode, we're going to get into just what decision intelligence is, the impact that it's having, and the benefits it can bring. So Fred, welcome. Thanks for having me, Lisa. Oh, it's awesome having you here. Um, you know, our team has really been digging into decision intelligence, and I'm excited to talk about it with you. Um, I want to get us started, though. First, tell me a little bit about yourself and, and your background and why you started ERA. Sure, sure. So my entire career has been um, in the world of enterprise software, building uh, an application that helped large organizations, CPGs and others, you know, perform better. So I've, I've touched on uh, data modeling, planning, uh, ERP, business intelligence, uh, data science. And it all came to a point where about six, seven years ago, uh, we realized that there was a, a need for a new generation of solution that would combine those different practices of, of business intelligence, of automation, and, uh, and AI slash data science to really help large enterprise deal with uh, a new challenge, which is the uh, decision agility and scale. In other words, the ability to process uh, the vast amount of decisions that those uh, large organizations have to uh, uh, to, to make um, on, on a daily basis to basically remain performing in a, in a complex world. So how would you, for people who aren't familiar with decision intelligence, I'm sure some of our listeners are, are maybe not have much information on sure. it. I know that Gartner identified decision intelligence as one of its top trends. Um, so for, for the basics, you know, what is decision intelligence and, and why is it so important for consumer goods? Sure. Uh, we like to define decision intelligence as the digitization of decision making. Take decisions. You and I are working together in a big company. We have to constantly make decisions to manage orders, optimize inventory, promotions, pricing, you name it. All these decisions, we're making them by leveraging tools, collaboration platforms, a large amount of data. Um, and, and the whole, uh, you know, science of decision intelligence is the ability to digitize this process, understand what the problem is, deploy decision logic digitally, come up with recommendations, uh, capture the decisions either made digitally or by uh, um, getting the input from a, from a business operator uh, and then executing uh, those, uh, those decisions. So the, the whole loop from identifying a problem, deploying the logic, making the decision and actioning that decision is what decision intelligence is. So we talk about decision augmentation by the ability to provide more accurate, more timely uh, uh, decisions, but also decision automation in that those decisions can actually be fully automated uh, with the decision intelligence uh, technology. Another element that's very important in that, uh, in that practice is the fact that uh, the decision intelligence uh, technology learns from the decisions that are made over time and captures that knowledge to deliver more accurate decisions and uh, more automated decisions. Okay, so you mentioned that it, it identifies the problem um, as part yeah. of the process. So what are some of these problems that decision intelligence can help solve in consumer goods? The, the, this, is, this is a very interesting journey. When we start working with our clients, we always look at what are the areas that um, a company identifies as where the, the, the decisions are not made fast enough, um, close enough to the point of impact because you now need to work at the, at the SKU level or at the consumer level when you used to work at a at different level of aggregation or that the complexity of the decision is too high. And we deploy the technology there. So decisions that companies currently make can be automated. And examples, inventory optimization or the management, logistics, transportation, procurement, all the traditional uh, decisions that are made by the business operators or uh, day in and day out. Could be long range, long term, you know, planning decisions, or could be decisions that are made within within a few minutes before they become obsolete. And maybe I'll come back to that point. Um, there's a new generation, so to speak, of decisions that we're tackling with our customers, which are the decisions that are currently not being made, um, which is very interesting. Why could are these decisions not made? Could you talk a little bit made? about that? Yeah, 
because they're actually sitting at maybe at the intersections of multiple silos. So look at the way an organization's been operating for many, many years. There are different operational silos. Some decisions sit at the intersection of this. I'll give you a, an example. We released recently what we call a skill, which is a capability of, of our platform uh, that we called marketing supply synchronization. Um, if you think about CPG world, right, the majority of the, the campaigns were actually planned months in advance, right? Whether it's a price promotion or pricing or, 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 or an advertising campaign media approach, you're planning this, these campaigns month in advance. Why? Because it takes time to actually produce the material, produce the campaign, roll it out. You have to schedule it. And on the flip side, you're making the product and putting, putting the product on the shelves. Well, that's uh, majority now of the spend is digital. And those campaigns can be adjusted in real time. So you now have the ability to, to analyze in real time the performance of a campaign. And based on that performance, that is a very, you know, skew level and a very defined regional impact. You can see if the inventory is going to be available on the shelves. And you can start based on the performance of the campaigns, regulate how much inventory you make available and vice versa. Mm -hmm. And those decisions make only sense if they're made in the moment. So that's an example of decisions that were not made before, but are being pushed by the consumerization of, of, of the, uh, you know, of our economy. So there's a lot of decisions like this that, that could not be made before because they were technically not, not doable or there was no need for them that are now uh, supported by decision intelligence. And they can only be made by computer systems because humans cannot think about all the permutations fast enough. They cannot be there 24-7 uh, making those, those micro decisions. So uh, decision intelligence deployed at some helping better strategy, better planning by, by managing complex optimization models, all the way down to some, I would like to call them micro decisions, but are in aggregate fundamentally impacting the performance of your company. Oh, that's really interesting. And uh, yeah, I would definitely emphasize as, as what you mentioned. I mean, there is certainly a great need for this now, a growing need for this now. Um, so we are going to be talking a number of times, um, but considering this is this is our first episode in this series, we'd love to get um, your advice for consumer goods companies that are interested in, in getting started with decision intelligence. If they're, What best practices would you offer a company that's still early in this journey? Get started would be my advice. And I'm not saying that because I have a biased interest in, in, in supporting them, but I fundamentally believe the, the example I just gave you changes, uh, at a, at a, at a, you know, in a massive way, the performance uh, of an organization and especially of its supply chain. Uh, so getting started, learning how to do it um, is, is really critical. This is not going away. This is the intersection of AI, BI, and automation. This changes the way the work gets done. The impact of decision intelligence is similar to the impact of robotization of, of, of manufacturing sites uh, when it happened. It's fundamentally giving organization the scale and the agility to perform in this digital world. There is an interesting statistics from, from IDC that I picked up recently from, from Dan Vesek, who's the leading analyst on decision intelligence for IDC. They talked about the fact that uh, estimation of 50% of enterprise data is obsolete within hours. And 75% wow. of, of enterprise data is obsolete within days. However, 65% of the decisions must be made in a very short window of time. So when you combine this, it's literally you make the decisions on time and almost in full uh, to take a supply chain expression. You make them when they need to happen or you cannot make them anymore. And then you move back to the old world of making postmortem adjustments in the way your organization uh, uh, works. So I'm pretty passionate about the topic. We're seeing most large CPG companies in the world right now across, across countries, across continents, uh, deploying some level of, of decision intelligence. I think it's not a it's not a nice to have. It's actually a must have. It's becoming table stakes. Yeah. Okay. So um, let's end with some predictions. 
So really through the lens of everything we've been talking about, I um, would love to hear your thoughts on what you see the future of CPG is going to look like. Let, let's start with first a year. What do you think things are going to look like a year from now? It's super difficult. You're talking to someone who spends six, seven years building a solution that's really coming mainstream today. And I think my sense of timing has always been absolutely terrible in the short term. <laughs> so I can't really tell you a year, but I can tell you in, in, in uh is what I'm seeing today with the most advanced companies. So our journey was really starting with the most advanced companies in CPG, the biggest firm that had the most advanced systems and approaches and methodologies and, and people. And look at the impact that decision intelligence can have with them. I believe that this is rolling down and we're seeing, we started with companies that were, you know, between 20 and $50 billion in revenue or more. And now decision intelligence is being deployed by companies that are much smaller as, as, a, as, a, as a best practice. So I think you're going to see an adoption of that. I think with this, and maybe we'll have a time to, to talk about it some other time, I think you're going to see new roles. There is a fundamental impact that decision intelligence brings on the future of work. And we're starting now to talk with our customers about decision architects. We're talking about uh, a decision analyst, which is a different role. It's a hybrid role. It doesn't have to be a data scientist at all but it's a person that understands how decisions are made, how are they executed, how, when you start thinking about digitized decisions, how do we orchestrate all of this? There's a whole new level of orchestration that goes across the different silos in an enterprise. I think there's a new generation of folks who are gonna come in and, and have a, a very, very strong impact. So uh, I think the digitization, the consumerization, all these trends that, that your listeners know well about, um, and I don't need to, to go there, uh, are going to be enabled and supported uh, with decision intelligence. And, and I think that trend is, uh, is going to last. And those job titles are interesting. Maybe there's, we're going to see a decision editor um, in the near future. Yeah. <laughs> so I know, <laughs> I know you said you're terrible with time, but last question, just want to push you a little more. Um, five years from now, what's your prediction on what the consumer goods industry is going to look like five years from now? Again, terrible with time, uh, which is bad <laughs> for an entrepreneur. No, I think I'm pretty good with seeing the trends uh, quite early, but I think the trends that we're seeing right now where the product gets delivered to your doorsteps in, in minutes versus days, and that trend is not going away. So uh, the consumerization uh, of this industry is unavoidable. I think there's going to be a much bigger sense of um, um sustainability and, and social responsibility in the way products that the consumers are buying the products, the way, you know, all of that is, is all the trends are, are already happening. Uh, so within the industry, the digitization is going to enable, uh, uh, you know, this, these bigger trends of consumerization of delivering the products to the doorsteps of the consumer whenever they, whenever they need it. And I think the consumers are going to be more and more, uh, aware of what they're buying and more and more conscious of what they're buying. And that trend, again, with it adds a ton of complexity uh, for the CPG industry. Every decision now has to be, traditionally it was cash cost service level, now it's carbon, now it's water, now it's social responsibility. And all this complexity has to be managed. And unfortunately, the traditional model of a big pyramid of people working on top of a bedrock of transactional systems supported by a bunch of point solution is not going to work. You have to leverage digital to manage that complexity. Oh, well, those some great words to leave us with, Fred. Um, I want to thank you for coming on Tech Transformation. I'm really looking forward to our next conversations. Thanks for having me, Lisa. I enjoyed it too.